X-ray guitar tonight. That's right. I uh, I have a guitar that changes colors, and uh, you can see right through it. And, uh, and I can't even see the wires. And, and when we look at it from the left, we can see right through you. That's right. I'm looking through you, and you're not. Anyway, so anyway, well, uh, well, welcome to Tom's Guitar Show. I'm Tom. They call me Guitar Tom because I'm often seen with a guitar. And they call me on the phone. They ask me. They say, "Hey, man, what's your show about?" I say, "That's about an hour. It's about guitars, guitar players, guitar playing." All things guitaristic. If you want to um, call on the phone, ask a question about uh, what kind of guitar is right for you, how to play the guitar, the care and feeding of your guitar. I want to talk about chord theory. That'd be fun because I like the you know, all these jazz guitar players. I'm trying to help instruct these days, young people. Um, oh yeah, or you want to talk about some related topic like the banjo, ball like a bazooki. Uh, bajo sexto, mandolins, mandoras, mandolas, mandocellos, banjo lelis, lutes, uts, vejuelas, cavaquinhos, tiples, ukuleles, guitar lelis. Want to talk about cellos or you know harmoniums or harpsichords or harmonicas, harps. Um, pipe organs, piccolos, accordions, ocarinas, clarinets, clavinets, clavinovas, clavichords. We'll talk about uh, timber. We lost a, never mind, the green thing there just fell over. That's all right. Uh, any, I, any kind of this musical thing is fine with me. Uh, uh, politics, world events, your own personality problems, that's fine too. Keep it clean, this is a family program. So, uh, anyway. I like that. Now there's two of me.
a lot of fun with chords. Got my uh, E9, or no, it's a D9, excuse me, here's an E9, right? Here's my E sharp 9. Uh, right? Here's my E sharp 9 flat 5. Here's my uh, E7 flat 9. E7 flat 9. Yeah. What's going on over there? And that's a 6. So this is an E69. That's pretty, isn't it? Huh? Huh? It's what jazz players do. We've already determined I don't want to be uh, considered a jazz guitar player because uh, one thing the purists would come and say, "Do you know the book?" I say, uh, "What? What? Which book is that?" And then I get beat up, you know. And then if uh, I've had some of the stuff I play be described as smooth jazz, them are fighting words in some circles. Here's my five, my flat five. Huh? Here's my, uh, that's a nine flat, here's a sharp nine flat five. Here's a flat nine flat five. Uh, here's a uh, D minor nine. That's right. That's a pretty chord too. Huh? There's A minor nine. A minor nine augmented. Huh? A minor uh, six nine.
minor 7. D minor 7. E9, E9, 7 flat 9. I was troubled by my pick guard's uh, adjusting screws being uh, loosened, and I think uh, I don't need a pick guard. Even if I use a pick, I don't need a pick guard. You know what I mean? It just sort of gets in the way. I mean, you know, I'm, I hate it when people scrub the top of their guitar with a pick. I mean, you have a little control, man. You know what I'm saying? Of course, on the show tonight, the pick guard is the part of the guitar that shows. 
I suppose. Without my pick guard, what would I have? I'd be, well, I guess on that camera, the guitar shows. Yeah. Well, we have all kinds of uh, wonderful technology here. Uh, well, if they had this in the 70s, it would have really been something. But uh, Of course, in the 70s, TVs were... Well, color TV was coming in by then. Mid-60s, color TV really started catching on. Yeah. Well, they only changed the technology a couple times around, but... Yeah. Things are... Uh, I don't know what's going to happen next. Maybe they'll just beam it into your room in three dimensions. Yeah. So I was thinking, you know, for, as my legacy to the world. like an iPod on your arm or in your pocket. Yeah, it, beams it, it beams it in the middle of the room, or, or I'll just beams it right into your head. Well, that will be the next generation. Yeah. It'll be a hat. And after that, I'll be an implant. Yeah, right. And then and all the conspiracy theorists turn out to be right. Well, they can't all be right. They can't all be wrong, but they can't all be right. I keep waiting for Beta to come back. Yeah. Beta Max? Or beta, yeah, beta cam. No, beta max. Yeah. Beta cam was a. Uh, well, beta beta cam was the same format. Yeah, but that was usually like big, really high quality, uh, professional camera. But yeah, man, I was remember we were talking about how Phil had a camera named after him. It was an SVHS. Uh. And uh, we're talking like we're talking like old times. I remember when that was new. So, wow, SVHS. That's better than regular VHS, huh? But I, I liked eight. And then high. That's yeah, an extra hundred and some lines of resolution. Yeah. There's a bit less than three hundred on VHS and something yeah. a little over four hundred, I think, on SVHS. Yeah, that's Well. I, I see I'm on camera. Let, let me throw in an extra plug this week. Uh-huh. Watch this station. At the center, you will see that the Iowa City Johnson County Senior Center's annual quilt raffle is coming up. Oh, the quilt raffle. Okay. Uh, last week of September, first week of October, tickets will be available at the Senior Center and from quilters and at various high vs and other locations around town that will be announced. All right. And while we're doing shameless plugs, yeah. what are you doing this week? Well, I'm, I'm going to go over to the moon, uh, the Tuscan moon, uh, Friday, Saturday night. I'll Would that play. be in Kelowna? be Kelowna, beautiful downtown Kelowna, right next to the uh, bakery. So many fun things to do and see. I like the cheese house and the bakery. My, my Kelowna. Ordinary resolution. VHS was 240. SVHS was 400. Super Beta was even higher. I don't know what. 240, Okay, our technical staff has just arrived and informed me that VHS is 240 lines of resolution, SVHS is 400 lines no, of resolution. No, 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 no. no? Ordinary VHS was 240. Oh, two, 240. And SVHS was 400. Should, should, I, should I pass you the mic, Phil? Would you like to come out here? Step, step on out here and let the people see you. Phil's going to... Uh, step on over in front of my camera here. And look at Esteban. <laughs> oh, there I am. Now I'm a television star. Ordinary VHS was 240 lines. That's horizontal lines. That is uh, the number of horizontal lines that can be resolved. Mm -hmm. Uh, Don't confuse it with the 525 horizontally stacked lines. Mm -hmm. The resolution was 240 for VHS, 400 for SVHS, and something higher than that for beta, mm-hmm. SVH, uh, uh, super beta, I mean to super say. Super beta. Okay. That's, uh, that's videotape history right there. <laughs> that's I, our technical expert, Phil Phillips. Yeah, he would know. He's been, Phil's been in media for a while. But I, I, uh, the, the problem is that, uh, you know, we, we have to, I, I, I save my shows on mini DV, you know, yeah. and it's getting harder to find something to play that on. I mean, I've got little... A little cam product. Yeah, it's going out of style. All, yeah. all the new cameras have either a hard drive or a flash drive. Yeah, and those cards. And we had these cards that are like 500 bucks a piece or something like that yeah. for these um, memory cards. But now we're getting down to, to, to uh, the SanDisk one, which is like... Yeah, now, now a card that holds 10 times as much information is 20 bucks. Right. So that happened in the last couple of years. Yeah. I remember... Uh, like that's why we're using our, our old, uh, our old uh, high-def cameras for checkout. Now they're the studio cameras. Because they had the, because the cards are just too expensive, you know. Now we get cheap cards. So. Oh, what a weird world! Now here, this guitar, 
These are, are P90s. This is a 50s technology. This guitar is basically 50s technology. It's a, it's a new guitar. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> not brand new, but <laughs> it has a... This is 1950s technology, or maybe more like 40s, really, but I have 50s, I guess. So the, the, uh, the design is 1920s, basically. The, 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 the arch top guitar is early 1920s design kind of pattern after a violin or a cello. Um, the uh, people start putting pickups on them in the 30s, like Charlie Christian. Um, uh, then uh, by the 40s, you could, you could get an electric guitar that's you know, like pretty much, much like this. And in the 50s, they came up with a solid body electric guitar. And now, a lot of people would say that, well, you know, if you, if you got an early 50s Telecaster, it can't really be improved upon. Some people will argue with that, but some people will say that's like the Stradivarius of electric guitars. So, uh, I don't know, man. Oh. oh, now I see all the guitar companies are in trouble because nobody young is taking up the guitar. Yeah. All you guitar players are old guys. Yeah, well. <laughs> the young guys want to play a computer keyboard. Well, they want to go like this. They don't, they don't use a keyboard anymore. They, they have the little phone thing like yeah. that. So, I used to do this, but now... Yeah. Yeah. So you can... Uh, yeah, probably don't even use a computer anymore. It's all smartphone now. Yeah, that's right. Or a tablet. Okay. Well, of course, those are computers. They are computers, but an iPad or a, or some some similar tablet or a Kindle Fire or something. Uh, I read somewhere that an iPhone has more computer power than the North American Air Defense System did in the 1970s. Uh, well... Just goes to show you something, I guess. Where will it all end up? <laughs> That's like the old how many angels can dance on the head of a pen. How many computers will you be able to put on the head of a pen? I suppose. One thing is for sure, you don't have to buy any more tape. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, tape, like masking tape and right. uh, duct tape, of course, lots of that. But uh, yeah. not videotape or audio tape. Yeah, I remember when computers had those big reel-to-reel -reel tapes with yeah. tape about that wide. Right. And you'll be going, eh, eh. Eh, 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 around them slowly. Yeah, I remember uh, touring the computer lab when I was a kid. See these big things. Don't touch any but anything, you know. There's these big things. And people around with lab coats, you know, watching the big reels, yeah. kind of going clicking back and forth. Yeah. I, I used to call on State Farm back in the 60s. And they had two computers. Uh -huh. State Farm Insurance Company, two computers. Uh -huh. Each one was bigger than this studio. Uh -huh. And well, one of them... One of them was an RCA and the other one was an IBM. Hmm. Anyway, all their old records were on what they called punch tape. They were paper tapes with holes poked in them. Uh -huh. And they had the RCA because it would read those. Then it could talk to the all the newer records were on magnetic tape that the IBM ran. And the RCA could talk to the I IBM. So they had to have the RCA to read the old records and tell the new computer about it. I see. Mr. Skabinski. Um, the um, uh, back in the 70s, I remember when I was an undergraduate, I took a uh, course on physics of music, and mm -hmm. they were doing messing around with computer music. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, you had to do it. Remember punch cards? Uh -huh. the, uh, we had to do a punch card per note. So uh, at the end of our, it was actually a half semester course, uh, what they used to call mini courses. And uh, so, you know, you'd, you'd accumulate your little stack of, uh, it was like baseball cards, but each, each card would, would be a, a dollar bill. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah, remember those cards? You register yeah. for a course and you get a card for every course you registered by computer. Well, you used to do your income tax on those too. There you go. Yeah. I, used to, I, mean, I used to do uh, job applications and things like that, but, or your unemployment, I think. Uh, but I would I remember walking home from church when I was a kid, and then there'd be like, a, you know, right by the Seashore Hall, and there'd be these cars like littering mm. the place, blowing around and everything like that. And uh, I haven't seen one of those in a long time. But. Well, they're probably ultimately more biodegradable than uh, thrown away uh, tablets or iPhones or whatever. Which yeah, are, well, you better recycle those. There are toxic elements in those and so let's, forth. Let's hope, yeah. Um, by the way, when you go back to playing music, you said you were going to the moon, meaning the Tuscan moon in mm -hmm. uh, beautiful downtown Kelowna. Uh, do you know the song, Fly Me to the Moon? That would be something we... Yeah, there you go.
Jim is our director, which is why the camera is still on me. Yeah, well. As so, soon as he gets back to his yes, we'll see Tom again. <laughs> Embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> Seven suspended four. I'm, I'm all about chord theory these days. So I'm messing around with this, uh, I've got electro harmonics stuff on the floor. One thing I've got the hum debugger, because this guitar hums really badly. The P90 pickups, they pick up all the hum from the fluorescence and stuff. So I have a hum debugger down there. It's uh, kind of hidden under my mic stand here. I don't need it. I mean, I just turn it on once and then, you know, if I turn it off, it sounds like um, it's going bzzz. But if I push it and uh, turn it on, it's mostly gone. Um, then I've got the uh, Ditto TC Electronics little box here in the floor. You can't see it because it's all green and everything. You can see my yellow uh, court. Then over here, I've got a holy, oh boy. I got a holy grail and every time I kick it or touch it, it goes, makes noises. And I've got to figure that out because I, I don't exactly own it yet. It's used, but um, something's wrong with it. Oh, shut up, everybody. I'm going to go down. I just plugged it. It doesn't like it if I touch it. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, um, but the holy, I have a holiest grail. This is a smaller, cheaper, and older um, model made in New York. It's a reverb. See me my reverb sound. So what I have here is a um, hall. It's in like concert hall reverb. Well, I like sitting in the dark like this. This is kind of cool, man. Uh, but if I uh, turn over here carefully, I'll get room. So this is like a. my uh, little delay from the amp but one feature it has is flurb which is uh, flanger and reverb mixed so I could do some sort of cheesy space uh, soundtrack to some, spe some cheesy space show. Hey, yeah, we got a, a cheesy space show that we do here at PATV. <laughs> Anyway, um, and 
as the leader of Tom and the Tribbles, you must know all about space. The final frontier. This one is a spring reverb. It's supposed to sound like a, an old-fashioned uh, spring. Uh, you know, these use a spring. Yeah. The, the electricity go through the spring, and it would wobble. Let's see if I can turn it up a little bit more. Spring here. Kind of nice, actually. Too much uh, reverb, uh, we have too much delay in the amp.
Chord theory is a big deal for me. I mean, it's a wonderful thing. You can like mix notes together and uh, harmonize. Now, uh, if you're more of a classical musician, we can talk about counterpoint. But uh, I don't know. I don't know enough about it, I guess. I, uh, but chord theory, if you mix with numbers, you know, you take your take your chord, you know, you take like your C chord. What is a C? Well, you got the one, the three, and the five, the scale. The C, D, E, F, G. C, E, G. One, three, five. I'm cutting my fingers. I actually know this already, but I'm doing this for dramatic purposes. So, okay. So, so to make a, a major chord, it's like C, E, G. Like, or, so you play your big old C chord on a guitar like this. There's three notes in there. Excuse me, there are three notes in there. Although I'm playing six because I'm playing uh, two C's, two E's, and two G's. So I got... I'm just doubling up notes, right? I don't need that C in the bottom. I can put another G on top, so I have two C's, one E, and a G on top, and so I got two G's, two C's, and one E. It's still C chord, this is C chord. This is C chord. Okay, so if I got my triad there, maybe I want to add something to it, like, uh, how about a C7? What does that mean? We see C7 chords all the time, so C with a 7 next to it. What does that mean? Well, that means 7 notes above the root and flatted. And what's 7 notes above C? Uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay, so that's 7. Uh, 7 notes. Of, i got to break it a B flat, though, right? So I'm going to put B flat. I got a B flat and a C7 chord. You can invert it. I like this when you put it down. I, like I put the B flat in the bottom. It says here's my C up here, but anyway, C7. What if it says C major 7? What does that mean? So that means a C major 7, a C major chord with a 7? No, it means a C chord with a major 7, which is just a B natural. So it sounds like this. To review, here's a C or a C chord. Here's a C7. Here's a C major 7. See? Very different chord. This chord and this chord sound very different. Right? How about a C at 9? What does that mean? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I put a D. You heard that before? What is that? It's C add 9, C, C major 7, C, A suspended 4th, A minor, A suspended 2nd, A minor. It's all about the chords. It's all about what you put on top of the triad. Okay. Oh, yeah. In a minor, what you do is you flat the 3rd. What's the 3rd? C, D, E, E flat. So... C minor chord. Major. Minor. Seriously, I've sat in front of rooms full of uh, kindergartners. Say, happy chord, sad chord. But in some countries, minor is happy. You know? And uh, everybody knows this minor is a lot easier to be romantic with. Major is too like a... Heaven, there is no beer. That's why. Wait, that's a C major. All right. So um, here's C seven. And if you have what you call a C nine chord, that means you're gonna have to put a a D, the nine. But if it says just says C nine, means it's a C seven with a nine tossed on top of it. So it's gonna be like a. 
before we put another G on top. See? That's a C9. This is C add 9. This is C... Because it has a B flat. Because it's still... If it says C9, it's a C7. Uh-huh. All right. So, I mean, you say, wow, that's cool, man. How about C minor 9? Well, I'm going gonna, gonna to take my C9. I'm going to flat my third. Isn't that cool? Anyway, it makes me happy. So, I mean, you go on like that for a while. How about C, C7 sharp 9, also known as a C sharp 9. So I take my C9, and I sharp the 9. And it's like... That chord sounds like an emergency to me. How about a C7 flat 9? Huh? How about a, a, a C... Uh, a C, uh, a C minor, no, a C six nine. Um, you see, because uh, so you got the D, right, right, and then a six is an A. That's a pretty chord too. A six nine, because it's a six nine. It's no, there's no seven in there. See. Instead of it being a C9, it's a C, and you've lowered the 7 to a C. Am I making any sense at all, anybody? I mean, you could, like, record this. And Maybe you should play a song. Yeah. Actually, you can replay that last little chord thing if you're a guitar player and like record it, you know, and meditate on it. I, uh, 
ripped that off from Pocketbell, but he ripped it off of somebody else. So, yeah. And uh, everybody used that one, like... Ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. I mean, that's part of it anyway. I find myself, find, find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Think about it when he goes like there's F climbing down C the B flat. What's that? That's a C7 with the B flat in the bass. I did it again, didn't I? Huh? I can't help it, man. I got the chord theory thing going to But that's what you do, you know, when you play the guitar, you play a lot of chords. Look at that. That's cool. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I'm in the yeah. I was in the I had my guitar inside my guitar for a while. Anyway. Uh, Thank you. 
This is a quilting show. Quilt raffle. Quilt raffle. So you raffle the, for the quilt? Every, every year, the Johnson County, Iowa City Senior Center quilters make a quilt to raffle off. I see. Anyway, tickets will be on sale, I think, it's September 27th to October 7th at the Senior Center and then a day at a time, various other places, high V stores and the like. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And if you know a quilter, most quilters will probably have them for sale. Hmm. And that, well, that's... The, the biggest support, you know, the biggest single support that the senior center gets all year. Is the quilt thing, really? The quilt raffle, yeah. The quilt raffle, huh. Yeah, you know, they get various, well, that and they get supported by the city and county, but. And they get 25 bucks a year from the members. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, actually a little more than that for me because I don't live in the city. Oh, really? They, yeah, they charge more if you live in the county. Huh. Because huh. the county doesn't support them as much as the city does, and, and I live out in the county. Yeah. Well, you like it out there, in the, away from the hustle and bustle? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was a place where we could turn the kids loose on their bicycles when they were kids and living at home. Yeah, I suppose. Well, I was loose on my bicycle, but that was in the olden days, I suppose. Yeah, yeah me, me too. You know, I lived in Peoria, which is an industrial town, but yeah. but that was many long years ago. Yeah, you're probably more dangerous from the pollution than from the thugs or whatever, but uh, yeah. Of course, you couldn't get too far on one of those old uh, tubular steel bicycles, though, I suppose. But. I got, got hit by a car on one one time, so. Uh, that's something. <laughs> yeah. Did you break anything? or Just the bicycle. Yeah. And I settled for like 30 bucks. Oh, yeah. Huh. That's what it took to fix my bike. I see. Huh. Well, those were the old days. Huh? And the insurance company tried to talk me out of that. Mm-hmm. That was before... Uh, that really, that was before the cassette tape. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're just talking about how we don't use tape anymore, and uh, that's before VHS. Huh. Well? Oh, yeah, that was, what, I was 9 or 10 years old, so 60 years ago. Yeah. All right, well. Yeah, well. Film. Well, they had tape 60 years ago. But. Oh, yeah, they, they had the reel-to-reel audio tape recorders. Yeah. I was watching a James Bond movie the other day where they're using a reel-to-reel audio tape recorder. Mm-hmm. Reminds you how long James Bond has been around. Well, I remember Mission Impossible. They have Good Morning, Mr. Phillips, or whatever. Yeah. They would have the uh, Phillips. The tape sort of. will self-destruct. Yeah, it was a tape, but it was like a little reel-to-reel tape, you know. I remember they had a little, had a little uh, reel-to-reel tape recorder once. Yeah. The little spools like that. Those were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never end. Those were the days. We're chasing all our viewers under 50 away. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about that when we were talking about the IBM courts. Yeah. yeah IBM cards. Yeah. Well, well, I've talked to people about VHS tape, young people, you know, say, oh, I've yeah. seen those. Yeah. I mean, they, had, they grew up in the DVDs. And now people are getting rid of their DVDs for Blu rays. Which reminds me, I want to get a Mel Brooks uh, collection, I think, you know, of uh, yeah. Blazing Saddles, Robin Hood Men in Tights, Spaceballs, for sure. I want Spaceballs. Um, when that first hit TV, they didn't change the aspect. Mm-hmm. And when the little monster goes down the bar, you mm-hmm. could see the rod sticking up out of the bar that was supporting the little monster. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> it's like when uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure first hit, there. He's driving down the road, mm-hmm. but on TV, you could see the signs were on a little rail, and they, he was sitting still in a car with a background, and the, and the signs were going past him. Oh, I see. Ah, huh. But they fixed that. The video's been recropped for TV now. Speaking of James Bond, I was watching From Russia with Love, mm-hmm. and he shoots down a helicopter with a rifle, uh-huh. 
Anyway, if you watch close, you can see the cable the helicopter is hanging on when it falls. You know, there are websites that are dedicated to these things. Well, anyway, we'll be back next week. Two weeks, I guess, we're up to start the coffee house, so...